Hey, this video goes along with kites and trapezoids, but now we're on the coordinate plane. So if I give you four coordinates, you should be able to tell me what type of quadrilateral it makes. And we've learned a lot of them so far. A parallelogram, a square, a rectangle, rhombus, and we've recently learned kite and trapezoid and also isosceles trapezoid, that's a choice as well. Whoops. Okay, so keep in mind it could be any of those. Now I'd always recommend that you graph your points, take a look at it. You know, clearly this is starting to look like a kite, but now we just need to prove that it's a kite. We know that there's going to be no parallel sides on a kite, so we don't really have to do anything with slopes. However, with all kites, we know that the distances or the lengths of two pairs of consecutive sides will be congruent. So what we want to do is use the distance formula to find the distances of all four sides. That way we can compare the lengths. Well, a couple of these are pretty quick. So PQ, I can just count that as two units. PS is also two units just by counting. So right there I have one pair of congruent consecutive sides. Okay, and now I'm going to do the same thing for QR and RS, but now I need to use my distance formula. Q, 0, minus 5, and then 2, minus 5. So this is going to be negative 5 squared, which is 25. This one's going to be negative 3 squared, which is 9, okay? Which is going to simplify square root of 34. Okay, now I'm going to do the same thing for RS. Go ahead and plug that into your distance formula, pause the video, and then resume to see if your answer matches my answer. Okay, so once you finish your distance formula, you should also get the square root of 34, which proves that these pairs of consecutive sides are also congruent. So then remember, you're always going to write a sentence. Since PQRS has two pairs of consecutive congruent sides, it is a kite. Okay, go ahead, graph your points for number two, and then try to get an idea of what shape you think we're dealing with. Okay, just by looking at this picture, we can kind of tell that this looks like a trapezoid, and it looks like PQ and SR are parallel, but we're not really sure. Okay, so in order to solve this problem, we need to use the slope method for all four sides. Because what we want to show is that PQ and SR are parallel, but the other pair of opposite sides should not be parallel, and then it would be a trapezoid. So we're going to start by finding the slope of PQ, and that's going to be down 1 to the right 3, so negative 1 over 3. And then also the slope of SR, which is down 2. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 to the right 6, which does simplify. Same slope. And we know whenever two segments have the same slope, they are parallel. And then we're going to do the same thing for the other two sides. And hopefully when we do these slopes, they do not come out the same because a trapezoid should only have one pair of parallel sides. Okay, So SP, that's going to be up to to the right 4, so 1 half, or 1 over 2, and QR, that's up 3 to the right 1, so these are not congruent, so these are not parallel sides. So our original conclusion is true, this is a trapezoid because only one pair of opposite sides are parallel. Okay. Once you make this conclusion, then you want to decide if your trapezoid is isosceles or not. We can tell just by looking at these two segments, these legs, 
that the QR is much shorter than PS, so it's not isosceles. So therefore we can say since PQRS has one pair of opposite sides that are parallel, it is a trapezoid, and it's not isosceles since QR and PS are not congruent. And you can always test that with the distance formula. Okay, go ahead and give number three a try, see what you get, and resume the video to check your answer. Okay, question number three, really similar to number two. Um, you've got one pair of opposite sides that are parallel and one that are not, so that's how we immediately know it's a trapezoid. And then if you do test the distances of these legs, PQ and RS, you will find that they are in fact congruent. So therefore the best name for this quadrilateral is an isosceles trapezoid.